while tongue emojis never change their pink hue. When you look at your tongue, have you ever noticed it looking a little off? We've invited a team of oral healthcare professionals to give us a full taste of what's going on if your tongue isn't exactly tickled pink. First, let's break down the anatomy of your tongue. Yes, your tongue has its own anatomy. Just like your heart, your tongue is always working. Even when you're sleeping, it helps you guide saliva down into your throat. And it plays a key role in everything from speech, teeth, breathing, sucking, and something called mastication, better known as chewing. It also plays a key role at the beginning of the digestive process. It helps you swallow food, moving it into the esophagus, and then to the digestive tract. In fact, your tongue extends all the way to about here in your throat. The tongue is also considered an organ. It actually has eight muscles. We have the extrinsic muscles, which helps you with the tongue position, and then the intrinsic muscles, which helps you to change the shape of the tongue. And this is particularly important during speech, eating, and swallowing. Now, what about those bumps located on the surface of the tongue? Are those our taste buds? The bumps in your tongue are actually a tough part of the skin called papillae. These bumps give your tongue a rough texture that it helps you eat. They also contain the temperature sensors, so you know if the coffee is too hot or the ice cream is too cold, as well as your taste buds. To break it down, it goes tongue to papillae, which shields your taste buds, and these taste buds consist of a collection of taste bud cells, and each of them has receptor proteins. And that's basically the ground zero of how we enjoy food and drinks. Okay, so how exactly do those taste buds detect taste? When we eat or drink something, it triggers a reaction among the taste receptors. So think of it as a lock and a key. So the receptor will be the lock and the food will be the key. And they have to match and then boom. So these receptors, they send a signal to the taste bud cell like, hey, we got something here. The taste bud gets triggered to send a signal to the nerve of the tongue. We send the signal to the brain in the gustatory cortex and the cortex will finish the job by telling you what taste you perceive salty, sweet, bitter, sour, or savory. Aha! But what makes someone more or less sensitive to certain tastes? One big reason is that different people will have different amount of taste buds. You could have all the way from 2,000 to 8,000 taste buds. So people that naturally have less taste buds, they are gonna be less sensitive to certain things. And clinically, we designate them as non-tasters. Sorry folks, you can taste, but you might not have the sharpest palate. Next up are the medium tasters. Personally, I consider myself a medium taster. And at the end of the spectrum, we have the super tasters. They're gonna have the greatest sensitivity to flavor. Okay, got it. Now, why do our taste preferences change over time? It is not uncommon for our sense of taste to change over time. And this could be because of many factors. If you're a smoker or to drink alcohol, for instance, that has been proven to dullen or lower your taste sensitivity. But one of the biggest factors is simply your age. As we age, the amount of taste buds might decrease. This usually begins to occur in our 40s if we are female or in our 50s if you are male. At the same time, our remaining taste buds might shrink or have problem functioning. So things that were way too of pudding or intense at your 20s, all of a sudden might be very appealing in your 40s. Okay, now let's talk tongue color. What can our tongue tell us about our health? Dr. Salama, break this down. For people at home, when you're doing self-examinations, color is important. Pink would be reflective of a healthy tongue. If you have a red tongue, for instance, that might indicate that you have a vitamin B12 deficiency. A B12 deficiency would be screened by uh, a medical doctor. There's also another condition called geographic tongue or geographic stomatitis. So geographic tongue is a benign condition, but we don't know what causes it. It looks like the silver lining on a cloud, but in the shape of continents in the tongue or mouth, and they can move around, which is why they call it migratory. Got it. Now, if you notice a white tongue, that could be due to many different reasons, including a dry mouth, which can lead to dehydration. Additionally, white tongue can develop due to bacteria, 
A buildup of dead skin cells or even very small particles of food can get trapped on your tongue in those papillae, causing them to swell up. So simply maintaining better oral health, which includes cleaning your teeth and your tongue, can help resolve the issue. I also see plenty of patients with leukoplakia. Leuko means is Latin for white. Plakia means plaque. We don't know what causes leukoplakia, but it can be a precursor lesion for oral cancer. There's another condition called oral candidiasis, which is an overgrowth of a type of yeast in your mouth. Usually it's an imbalance between the microbiome or the any number of combination of 400 different bacteria and yeast within your oral cavity. It can be a sign of immunosuppression. Most oral candidiasis is treated with antifungal therapy, which can be taken as a mouth rinse or a mouth lozenge and occasionally requires the use of medication like a pill. Typically, you'd see a resolution of oral candidiasis in one to two weeks, but in patients who are persistently immunosuppressed, it may take longer or require several cycles of treatment. Now, Dr. Salama also says there's something called black hairy tongue. Okay, that's a new one. Your mouth is biologically the most diverse area in your body. But when one thing changes at homeostasis, you can see conditions. And one of those conditions may be black hairy tongue. And in those circumstances, the filiform papilla, which are the small finger-like projections that are on your tongue, elongate, much like the hair on your head, although they're not composed of hair, and can take on color. Um, black, which uh, tends to get people's interest and that will bring them into the office for an evaluation. The color stems from the bacteria that reside there. It's not dirt. Some patients or some people have fissured tongue where they have crevices that go into the tongue and those act as really good reservoirs for bacteria and fungus. And it doesn't need to be you know, removed and just improvement with oral hygiene and tongues tongue scraping, which is not a general part of oral hygiene, but if you do develop oral black hairy tongue, then that would be integrated into your oral care regimen. Moving outside of the tongue color spectrum, what's going on if you notice an unusual bump or sore in your mouth? Canker sores or aphthous ulcers are fairly common in up to 25 to 30% of the population. They tend to be transient. We don't know what causes them. And most of them self-resolve on their own. And if they don't, then oral steroid rinses can alleviate the symptoms. Stress, smoking, being in an immune, immunocompromised state are all thought to contribute to aphthous ulcers, but they're, they're benign, they're just annoying. If an ulcer is present for two weeks or longer, and doesn't resolve and there isn't a reason for it to be there, then you should see your doctor about that. If people who have family members or they know someone who's had oral cancer, anything in their mouth they come in and they can sort of sense that like there's a level of anxiety about getting it. Most people don't look in their mouths, but if you look in your mouth too much, you also make yourself neurotic. So for patients who are really anxious, I say pick one day of the week and look at your tongue in the mirror. Okay, so outside of colors, bumps, and lumps, there's another term that's gained popularity during the pandemic called COVID tongue. Is this a real thing? Few studies have documented COVID tongue as a possible COVID-19 symptom. Some patients have reported tongue discoloration, inflammation, or other mouth problems. But the studies are too small, and it is too soon to make a conclusion. Now, if you think you are developing COVID tongue, keep in mind that it's very unlikely that you will develop it as your only COVID-19 symptom. Instead, it's more likely that you will develop the bumps or the discoloration along with more recognizable COVID-19 symptoms like shortness of breath, fatigue, coughing, or fever. Also, keep in mind that what it looks like COVID tone can easily be a symptom of any other infection. And even if the bumps or the discoloration are clearly connected with COVID-19, there could be many possible reasons as well of why this is happening. Got it. Now, the more common side effect from a COVID infection is the loss of taste and smell. What's happening here? Loss of taste and smell has been something that many people used to report with COVID-19 symptoms onset. But now with Omicron, that doesn't seem to be reported much at all. Like everything with COVID, we continue to study these symptoms as we go. But there is a group of people that they still haven't been able to recover their taste and smell, and it isn't clear why. But know that research is ongoing to find effective treatments to help those in need.